Hans Bug. Ja. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, geometry of non positively. Is it okay now? Okay, so which uh, uh, speaks about the symmetric spaces of non-compact type. But uh, I, I came to know, I mean, I decided to start with the basics of symmetric spaces because there is no point starting with non-compact symmetric spaces unless we know symmetric spaces. Okay, so I'm, I'll try to, uh, I'm hoping to do part of the second chapter, but I'm, uh, yeah, that might be uh, too ambitious, I mean, if I want to cover the entire chapter but I'll touch, okay? So, uh, so I'll start the basic theory of symmetric spaces. So I'll draw some pictures. So here is the circle, here is the plane, and here is the upper half plane. And so this has, you know, this is R2, this is H, and this is the S2. These are examples of uh, symmetric spaces with the matrix, uh, uh, Riemannian matrix that you have seen before. And uh, symmetric spaces means around every point there is a symmetry. So here, I mean, the picture is sort of clear that, you know, if you draw a point and then uh, the, you know, there are several great circles passing through this point and so on. So you just uh, take a point, you just uh, reflect along uh, with respect to this point. Okay, take this point P and you give a map the reflection, okay, like this. Okay, here also it is clear that if I choose a point, I just, uh, uh, take a point and reflect along this, take a point, reflect along this and this. And here I have this uh, half circles, which are, you know, uh, which are geodesics and so on. So I take, reflect, reflect, reflect. So these are all examples of symmetric spaces. And we'll see later that and these are also examples of constant curvature spaces. And with the matrix that, uh, the curvature here is 1, 0, and this is minus 1. And we'll see that uh, curvature, constant curvature spaces are also examples of uh, locally symmetric spaces. And if they happen to be complete and simply connected, uh, any constant curvature space is going to be symmetric space. Okay? So what is a locally symmetric space? So I start with the definition of uh, uh, So I have this uh, point P on a Riemannian, I start with the manifold M, Riemannian manifold. Okay. And P is a point. And I have this exponential map uh, from the tangent space. I mean, not from the entire tangent space, so I have this TPM and 2M. And the exponential map need not be defined on all of TPM, but uh, on a small ball around TPM. And the, there is a diffeomorphism. So I choose image of such a ball on which exponential map is diffeomorphism. So I have this exponential map P to M, and I assume that you know, B R P is V V in P M. 
norm of V is less than R. And assume that there will be one such ball on which exponential map is a diffeomorphism and the image is open. And uh, so there is, this is, there is a R greater than zero such that X of B R P is open in M and B from B R P to is diffio. Okay. So this is a general statement and it happens for any Riemannian manifold. So I con consider this map. So I consider this uh, I consider this ball and let let's call it uh, so B M R P just to put just to emphasize the fact that I'm talking about ball inside M. So this, let me define this as XP, uh, P, R, P. So I have a map from B, R, M, P to B, R, M, P, which is given by the, you know, P going to uh, X going to I consider exponential inverse. I consider minus identity at the tangent space, and I then I put back here. Okay, so this is ge geodesic symmetry. Okay, so if you draw the picture here, if this is P, then this is precisely you know, symmetry, I, I, I take a point here, and I just, if this is exponential x, then this point will go, go to exponential minus x. Okay, this is the map. So this is not always an isometry, okay? So we want to know, we want to know, and a space, okay, so let me define the spaces called Locally symmetric if, so definition, uh, a space is called locally symmetric if such a map, uh, let's call it uh, give it a name, sigma p, if sigma p, if for all p there is an r, depending on p probably, such that uh, sigma p from bm Rp itself is isometric. Okay, this is a diffeomorphism, but you want it to be isometric. And if such a thing happens for uh, all points, then we say that the space is locally symmetric. Okay. Okay. So one, one, one thing one should like keep in mind that you know. that if you take, you want to take a derivative of this map, it fixes P, okay? So, derivative gives me a map from D sigma P, there is minus identity. Okay, this just follows from the way I define, okay? So, so this is the, uh, condition for locally symmetric spaces. I mean, the definition of locally symmetric spaces. But there are many equivalent conditions. I mean, and if you want to prove, uh, want to know that certain space is locally symmetric and non, this is kind of difficult to check for every point. So we'll like, you know, derive certain easier, like, you know, equivalent conditions by which you can many times check that some space is locally symmetric or not. For example, 
I'm going to derive say, a bunch of conditions through which you will be able to check that constant curvature spaces are locally symmetric. Okay. Uh, so let me write down a theorem. And uh, so the M be a Riemannian manifold, then uh, then we have the then the following are equivalent. Okay, M is locally symmetric. The curvature tensor is parallel, and uh, he is. Uh, if I uh, so for any smooth path lambda from an interval to i. Okay, so uh, yeah. huh? Oh, uh, so you have you, you when you are given a connection and you give any tensor, then I can take the covariant derivative of the tensor. Yeah, R is the curvature tensor. Okay, R is. Is it clear now? Okay. Yeah, R is R is everybody calls by R. Uh, I mean, when what they denote curvature tensor, they denote it by R. Okay. So, but the definition of curvature tensor is not constant if you vary over the books. I mean, they depend by a minus sign. For example, if you see Milner's Morse theory, and if you see Helgason, they will uh, differ by a minus one. But the Point is the sectional curvature will match. I mean, we will adjust the. <laughs> so, I mean, the sex, by this definition, sectional curvature of this is not going to be minus one. So, we'll <laughs> we change uh, the definition of sectional curvature so that they, they agree. Whatever the definition that you take, finally, for sectional curvature, they agree. Okay. I don't know. I mean, why I mean, they have all the reasons to take. Uh, R, but for me, R is going to be x y is going to be okay. This is the operator on the vector field, and the Lie bracket on the operator on the vector. Okay. So sometimes people take minus of this. Okay. So. Uh, for any smooth path, uh, uh, and for any uh, vector field, so let me just introduce some notations because I must some some time will need that. Uh, so. So uh, if lambda i is a smooth path to M and M is equipped with a connection, okay, I don't need connection now. So I consider gamma is the vector fields along space of, so that means uh, uh, from i to Tm, so that pi of T is in. Okay. Okay. So this is the space of space or C infinity I module of module module. That's it. Okay. All right. So and we know what uh, I hope we know what. Uh, we call by 
parallel transport and parallel vector field. So this induces, I mean, the, once we, so let me just, I, uh, is, uh, is it done on this Riemannian geometry class? All these things are done, so good. All right, so for any, for any said, Vector field. There is a fourth condition which says that parallel transport respects curvature. So, I again, so here is another notation. So, if I, if P lambda, so suppose A, B are two points in, I, in the interval I, I consider uh, P lambda A to B from T lambda A M to T lambda B M. This is, uh, this denotes the parallel transport along lambda from so these are my notations so for any smooth Lambda PM. So I'm not managing the board well, so please forgive me for this. So I have to write a fifth. I mean, I have to continue. Maybe I'll write it here. B R of X, Y, Z is R of. So this makes sense for three vectors in the tangent space at lambda A because this is a tensor A to B. Y. Okay. And the fourth, fifth condition is uh, P lambda takes the sectional curvature, keeps the sectional curvature invariant also. So P lambda, so K is the, so K. K will denote the sectional curvature, a third notation here. KP of V1, V2 is the sectional curvature uh, for, I mean, for V1, Vm. And this, uh, we have seen that this does not depend on the vectors chosen, but on the space, the two-dimensional space that is spanned by them. So, but uh, for convenience, for stating the theorem, I need to denote not by S, by specifying these two vectors. And we recall that this is Kp V1, V2 is... Uh, 
there is a minus here r p v1 v2 v1 v2 by And this means uh, this means okay. Uh, okay. So we have this following thing that you know this is a number. So AP of uh, lambda a lambda b of this x um, okay so you see, there are so many equivalent conditions for a space uh, to be locally symmetric. And uh, for there are situations where you can use any of these uh, equivalent conditions. For example, a constant curvature space is going to be locally symmetric follows from this condition. OK, this equivalent condition. So all right, so I'll try to give a sketch uh, of proof of this theorem. But uh, all right, so let's improve. First, let us say that 2, 3, and 4, they are equivalent. Not just for sexual curvature tensor, for any tensor oh, which takes uh, value in vector fields. Like a tensor is a, either can be a map from uh, product of vector fields to function space, or it can be a map from product of vector fields to vector fields. So if I take, if I replace T by any tensor, then a similar test statement hold for. So that is a generality. So I, this is not nothing to do with local symmetric space. Two, three, and four are equivalent for any general Riemannian manifold. Okay. And probably five is yeah five is also true. So basically, I I'll prove one implies two, and five implies one. Okay, because uh, and okay four implies one, and later on I'll just show that four is equivalent to five. So two, three, and four are equi equal. I mean equivalent for any. Uh, tensor, not just uh, for any Riemannian manifold. Uh, so, all right, so one implies two. So this follows from the very basic fact that you multiply minus one three times, it remains minus one. Okay, so that implies one implies two. Okay, so I want to prove that R, so want to show R is zero. Okay, and what is the, so that this is equal to showing that, you know, this is the definition of R being this zero is same as this. Okay. And so I have to show, so we will show this is a tensor, oh, sorry, uh, y. Okay, this is what we want to show. Okay, so I want to show it at every point and I have a isometry. Isometry is once I have an isometry that gives me an affine map. So what is an affine map? So let me just recall. So 
So, or if I have m to n, uh, phi be a diffeomorphism, and x is a vector field, then my uh, I define x phi of n to be d phi. So I'm just uh, pulling via the map phi, phi is diffeo, and pushing it back. So this is basically phi inverse of n, x of phi inverse of n. Okay, so this is my definition for all. All right, so a map is called affine. Manifold liquid with a connection, and then a map, or manifold, two manifold liquid with two connections, a map is called affine if the following happens. Uh, X, Y, Y, let's call it this. Okay. All right. So, an isometry is always an affine map that f uh, comes from, you know, there is, so given a metric, there is a unique connection which satisfies certain properties and they are called a Riemannian connection. So because of which an isometry is going to be a fine map. Okay. So if I apply Y, Z, W at the point P, then I, what I get is if you do the calculation, you just get okay. Then if you evaluate at P, this gives the derivative of this is minus one, okay? And here everything gets multiplied by minus one. Here also minus one. So I have four minus one, which add, gives me one, and I decide. So this is basically at evaluating at p. p gives me minus of And I have minus here, minus here, minus here, minus here. They all give me plus, and there is a four minuses give me plus, and this is this is why and you know something which is minus two equates minus two itself that that is zero, so this is that means x r. is zero and this happens for every p so okay so one side is easy and now I'm going to prove and as I said two three four the whole mo generally for any any tensor for which, I mean, if you replace R by nothing to do with R, I can replace it by any tensor, which takes values in vector fields. Okay, so let me just prove five implies one. Okay, so to do this, I need to appeal to another theorem by uh, Elie Cartan. So I, before I start, I should have told that symmetric spaces is a theory developed by Elie Carta a long time back, almost 100 years back, 1926 and 1927, in two papers in Bulletin uh, of Mathematical Society of France. And there he sort of, you know, did the entire uh, basic theory there. And people just did what they did is just, just polished the presentation, okay? So what I am telling you, it is a theory developed 100 years back, but in a much polished way. Okay, so here is a. Uh, 
Sun's theorem. So it says the following. So, so again, I suppose suppose I have two manifolds M and N, and I fix two points P and or maybe M zero N zero two points and I have, uh, suppose I have A, suppose I have a map from the tangent space level. Suppose A is an isometry. Isometry means uh, this is equipped to the inner product, this are, that is also equipped to the inner product, is isometry between the two spaces. Right. I consider the map. I so I consider a, so again I consider a normal ball. So let me draw some picture. So here is my point. Uh, uh, this is the tangent space M0 at M. This is the tangent space M0 at N. And this is the zero of the tangent space, and this is the zero of the tangent space. And I have this manifold this. Here I have this manifold M. I have this manifold N here. And I have this, you know, exponential map not necessarily defined on the whole of T n 0 n also here it is not necessarily defined on the whole of this but on a small open set open like star shaped space uh, 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 set around 0 it is going to be defined so this let's call it T n 0 and let's call it uh, m 0 and then so these are all maps, local local maps here. So I consider, and I have a map here, A. So I consider the map which is given by somewhat similar to the earlier map which I defined. So this is x of uh, n0 a x of m0 in. So these are all, I mean, I, I what when I write such map, these are all, these, they all mean here when, when this is, this from this to this is a diffeo. I'm, I'm, I'm suppressing those facts, but if you want to be very precise, they're really uh, on small neighborhood, so you have to be careful when you write. Since I'm telling you, I'm not uh, writing all these things. So, so this is a map from, you know, let's call uh, dr uh, m. Okay, so this is a map from Okay. All right. You want to know when such a map is an isometry. This is a similar situation. I mean, in the local isometric space case, it was minus identity m is equal to n and so on. And m m naught is equal to n naught. So I think he, he proved this theorem in uh, keeping in mind that he could apply for the spaces of local isometric spaces in order to prove such a theorem. So we want to know when f is an isometry. Okay. 
So there are certain necessary conditions uh, for if uh, in order to uh, in order for the fact that f is going to be an isometry. For example, if f is an isometry, then it is always going to be of this form, a local isometry, because isometry commutes with exponential. So if f is an so assume f is an isometry, then f is exponential this, this, and this is going to be the derivative at the point uh, m naught. Okay. Moreover, if f is an isometry, then it respects the curvature tensor. Okay. So, uh, not if f is an isometry, then, if I take, uh, if gamma x m0 is the geodesic uh, from, okay, so, so this is the, this is the geodesic, so this is I, zero x to m is the geodesic. So given a, a tangent vector and a, a point and a tangent vector at the point, I can uh, get a geodesic uh, which uh, initiate, which is for which the initial point is m naught and the initial velocity is x. And the geodesic has and you can consider the maximal geodesic, that is the maximal interval. It is the geodesic is not necessarily defined on the entire R, but the maximal interval is going to be denoted, seems to depend on the point M0 and X. So uh, we'll uh, denote it by that. For example, if X is zero, then it is going to be whole of R. Some people don't like to call that a geodesic, but I'll, I'll watch, uh, so I, for generality's sake, I'll mention that also. So. So this is the geodesic, and uh, so let uh, we the, denote the. So this is a general ge geodesic for such that. And gamma dot x. All right, and then. Similarly, I have this Jurassic, I have this map A, A x at n0 is a Jurassic for i n0 A x to n. So, if I, if I, if I'm given this informations, then if f is isometry, then the parallel transport composed by the isometry A, parallel transport in M, and composed the isometry A, and then again two parallel transport in N, that is going to preserve the curvature tensor. So, so if F is an isometry, then uh, R of uh, R of gamma gamma x t zero a let me just denote this operator by this. So let yt denote the operator gamma uh, t zero a and p gamma x m zero uh, zero t okay 
So this is an operator from T uh, gamma x m0 T2 T gamma ax n0 T, OK? So for every T, I have such an operator. Every T and every X, I have such an operator. Maybe I should denote it also by X. Then, so this is a parallel transport. This is an isometric. This is a parallel transport, OK? I mean, in, in a vector space level, everything is isometric, OK? So then, this is, I mean, since F is an isometry, this is, you can check, this is a, also a very basic fact that since F is an isometry, this is going to be D of, I mean, uh, if DF, if I choose DF, if F is an isometry and F happens to be this, then A is forced to be D of F at N. So D of F at uh, M naught is A, then this is going to be D of F of uh, uh, gamma X M naught at T, okay? So if F happens to be an isometry, then this is, we have this. So I have the following fact that R of, uh, since F is an isometry, I can replace this by phi of T of X, U, Y of T, X, D, Y of T, X, W is same as R of T, D, W. Okay? So if F is an isometry, we have these two conditions. This and this parallel transport here composed with the isometry at M, M naught. Again, composed with the parallel transport gives me, it gives the curvature tensor invariant, okay? So this is the necessary. So what Karta proves is, is this is also sufficient condition. So if I have an isometry of the vector spaces A, and if I have, if I form the map like this, and if I consider the parallel transport this, it doesn't like, you know, depend on F. And if the parallel transport respects the curvature tensor, then F is an isometry. So, theorem statement is the following. If Y T X satisfies If I star, then F is an isometry. Okay. All right. So, how does one use this to prove the the condition five implies one? Okay. Sorry, condition four implies one. So you see, condition four says the parallel transport respects curvature. Okay? And at the point M0 multiplying by minus one respects curvature. Right? Because R of X of Y of Z minus of that is R of minus X minus Y minus Z. Okay? So and, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a generality. So the, you, the, this is a exercise in Riemannian geometry. If I have, so, so let me write down the exercise. So suppose, Phi from M, sorry, F from M to N, I don't even need a metric, is 
fine. Okay, then. Suppose lambda i, uh, lambda is a map from a smooth curve from this. I form f compose lambda from i when I find let this, let this be this, take Then, for any pair of points A, B in I, so, so basically, so I have this lambda, I am, I'm taking A, I'm taking B, and I'm taking uh, F of lambda A, f of lambda b. So I have this map. So I'm talking about the tangent space level. Lambda a m t of lambda b m t of this t of this. And I have this map df uh, at a. I have this map df uh, at lab, sorry, this is df at lambda a, df at lambda b. And I have this uh, parallel transport here, t of lambda from b to a, and I have this parallel transport here, p of f compose lambda from a to b. So this diagram commutes, OK? So, and this is true when f is affine, and I am in isometric case. So, this is affine, and you, have, you will notice that this, this uh, geodesic A is precisely image under f, okay, because, you know, right? So, you can, you can try to solve, I mean, this is not difficult, this is routine. Okay, so five implies one, I, uh, sorry, not five implies one, and four implies one, I have mentioned why, because of the fact that, uh, it's a very simple fact that uh, if we multiply three times minus one, it is minus one, okay? So I have proved everything except the fact that four implies five. Four is equivalent to five, and four is also equivalent to five because of, uh, Maybe I'll like, you know, I'm, so I'll, this, this is, this is an exercise, easy, this is very easy, follows immediately from the fact that uh, parallel transports are isometries between the corresponding vector spaces, uh, on the linear spaces, and so this, and this, this is, this is an algebraic problem. So this is an algebra, and you can, I'll, uh, for this, it just uh, follows from certain facts that a, a four linear, bilinear form, uh, not bilinear, four linear form from V cross V cross V cross V to V, uh, V is a vector space over a field of characteristic zero, satisfying some bunch of, you know, symmetries, then that, uh, B turns out to be zero. And from that fact, it follows that, you know, this implies this. And this is, uh, this is also you can try, this is, if you can't get, this is uh, given in Helgason. Helgason, I am not able to tell you the exact page number, but you can just dig it out from Helgason. Okay. So, okay, so here are all the, so I'm going to use all these uh, properties uh, now. And there is another result which uh, yeah. So now I need to uh, appeal to another result, but uh, uh, 
uh, I am afraid that if I give a proof, then it will like take up the entire time. So I'll just state the theorem and uh, uh, the proof is again going to follow from a generalization of Cartan's theorem, which is called Cartan Ambrose Hicks theorem. Cartan's theorem is a, a local theorem and Cartan Ambrose Hicks theorem applies to the entire manifold. And that is a little bit, uh, it will take time to state that theorem itself because it is a technical theorem. So I'll just state the result that I am going to need uh, and I'll say that this result follows from Cartan, Ambrose and Hicks theorem. And uh, if you know, want to know why, I can discuss it after the lecture. So theorem about locally symmetric space. So M, N, R, two locally symmetric spaces. Assume that, so assume dimension of M is dimension of N. M, N are complete. Riemannian manifolds, M is simply connected. Then oh, let us fix two points. So, so let Uh, M0 be a point in M and M0 point in N. Then the following are equivalent. There is, so one, given, so okay, so all right. let me also just write down another statement. Let A be a linear isometry from be a linear isometry then There is a uh, Riemannian covering map f from m to n such that f of m0, n0 with d of f of m0 is equal to a and 2 a respects the curvature okay r of uh, m0 x y z okay for all So this follows, this is a gadget I'm going to use, very useful thing which I'm going to use without proof. And the proof follows from another theorem, the proof, or oh, Riemannian covering means is a covering map and which is local isometry. So. By the way, I mean, there is another result which is, I mean, it, uh, it all uh, is there in proving this following theorem called, uh, so this follows, uh, 
from Dutton Ambrose Greeks theorem. Okay. If you know the statement of Carson Ambrose Higgs theorem, it follows immediately. And writing Carson Ambrose Higgs theorem itself is will take at least 20 more minutes. Okay. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to assume this. You just, you know, take it as take it for granted, and let me go ahead. So this says this theorem has the following. Corollary, which says, okay, now let me define what a symmetric space is. So, M is a M is called symmetric if for all p in m there is a isometry sigma p from m to m such that sigma p fixes p and P is an isolated fixed point for sigma P. And secondly, isometry. Sigma P square is identity. It's involutive. So every point has a global reflection which fixes the point. And it doesn't fix any other point nearby P. Okay. And the square is identity. So we have seen locally symmetric means locally there is a reflection. So if I can extend that reflection entire in the entire manifold for every point, this is called a symmetric space. Okay, so there are some uh, remark. So d sigma p is minus identity. If I am a, I have this symmetric space, d sigma is minus identity because d sigma p can have since square is identity, it can have it fixes p. So the derivative gives a map from the tangent space of p to itself, and the square is identity and for a linear map whose square is identity, it can have eigenvalues minus one and one. It cannot have eigenvalues one because the moment it has eigenvalue one, this this is going to be violated. Okay, because d sigma p x of t x. Suppose suppose there is eigenvalue one. So this means what? D sigma p of x of p t x is x of p t x because sigma p is an isometry. Okay? And if I vary t, it's going to be giving a curve which is for which every point is fixed point. So p is not an isolated fixed point unless x is zero. Okay? If if d sigma p has an eigenvalue x which is not zero, then I have this point, this situation. But I'm demanding that this is an isolated fixed point. Okay. So if such eigenvalue is there, it, it will violate. I mean, it will have a curve approaching to to p, namely this one, this curve. This every point t x is going to get fixed. Okay. So. From this condition, I have this. All right. And you see, 
from this condition it also says that if there is an isometry at this point then there is an unique isometry okay because two isometries are same if they agree at a point and the derivative agree at that point so if i have two such isometries the derivative is going to minus identity and of course it fixes the point so they are going to be the same okay so uh, such an isometry so remark one two such an isometry is unique all right and i have a formula if i know that the exponential map there are manifolds for which the exponential map from the tangent space to oh the manifold is a diffeomorphism and uh, there are conditions uh, this there is a theorem called cartan hadamard theorem which says that there are many such manifolds there are conditions on the curvature which tells me that the exponential map is diffeomorphism so if i take the exponential map if i consider the manifold so that exponential map is a diffeomorphism then i have a formula for the isometry then sigma if x p from t p m to m is diffeo then sigma p is nothing but uh, x p minus identity all right so now theorem so let m be a locally symmetric space which is complete and simply connected then m is symmetric okay in this theorem yeah so in this theorem if i moreover assume that n is simply connected then this f is an isometry okay because this is a covering map and the object below is simply connected then it has to be diffeomorphism okay so if i assume that this both objects are simply connected i am assuming only the first one is simply connected here if i assume that n is also simply connected then this is an isometry okay so here i use that and take i mean here in that theorem i uh, i apply m and take n to be m and my a a here is minus identity okay minus identity satisfies this formula at p right because again this is just for the same reason minus 1 this is going to be a of this quantity is going to be minus of this and a of this is the 3 minus 1 and the come out this minus 1 so this is immediate from the previous theorem because that that if i obtain is going to be isometry because n is also simply connected i mean the both are manifolds are same it is self map okay so any locally symmetric space which is uh, complete and simply connected is symmetric okay so it says that corollary if m is complete 
and locally symmetric. Then it's universal cover. It is symmetric. Okay. I can I can consider the uni universal cover and put a Riemannian metric there so that the thing is a local isometry. And if, if I have a local isometry between two manifolds, one is complete if, even only if the other is complete, okay? And so my universal cover is going to be complete. It's simply connected by definition. So it is, and it is locally symmetric because this is a local isometry. So the curvature that formula is also going to uh, be true, the curvature the derivative of the curvature is going to vanish. So it follows immediately from theorem, first theorem. Okay, so let us now derive some properties of uh, symmetric space. The theorem, a symmetric space is complete. Let M be a symmetric space, then M is complete. This is number one property. Number two is the isometric group. The group of isometries acts, so, so M is uh, complete and uh, isometric group acts on M transitively. So I'm just going to point out uh, why. So the number, uh, so I'm going to prove that the space is geodesically complete if M is symmetric space. So if I have a geodesic for which, if I have a maximal geodesic for which the interval, the domain is not R, then we are going to arrive at a contradiction. Okay, so suppose M is not complete. Okay, so that means what? This means there is a point and X in TPM such that the maximal interval of the geodesic PX is not R. Okay. So what does that mean? I can, I mean, this is uh, going to be either, so uh, without loss of generality, I can assume that IPX is going to be the supremum of IPX is less than infinity. Uh, right hand side because I, if I if it is not if the infimum is finite either supremum is finite or infimum is finite or both of them if infimum is finite I will take minus x for the minus x the zero to six is uh, the interval is going to just flip okay so I take supremum of this and let uh, so this is an interval of this form let's say so this is an interval so I p x is basically an interval of this form. C D, this C can be minus infinity also, and where D is less than infinity. Okay. Huh? Time is up. Or is that so? Five minutes. Good. Okay, so I'll draw pictures and not uh, write any uh, symbol here. So I have D here. I have zero here. So I choose a T zero for which this part is much more than this distance, D minus T zero, okay? And then I Consider a geodesic in this direction and just flip through it. 
And if I have two broken geodesic, and at the break point, if I the derivative of the right hand derivative, right hand side derivative and the left hand side derivative with the match, then they give me the geodesic. Okay. So uh, um, so I consider this sigma, uh, I have this gamma x. I consider the point gamma x uh, p t0. I consider the reflection. I have a symmetry. Remember, I am in a symmetric space. So I consider lambda t to be this, compose uh, gamma x p. T zero minus T, okay, and we'll see that this is of course this is this is a geodesic because this is a fine change of parameters. Two T zero is a constant. I'm changing by minus T is a fine change of. I'm composing it as an isometric, so geodesic will go to geodesic. And if you cal calculate the derivative, you'll, you will see that lambda of T zero is going to be gamma of X P of T zero, and sorry. Lambda dot t0 is going to be gamma xp dot t0. See, there is a minus sign here. So if we take inside, the derivative is going to be minus. But then, since I am, an inner, I am composing by reflection, that minus will cancel out if I do this. So this will have the right, right sign. Okay? But this, so I have two geodesics which is agreeing at one point, and their derivative is also agreeing at one point. So in the intersection, in the interval of their definition, in the intersection of the interval of the definition, they, they agree. And from that, you will see that you'll be able to extend beyond D. Okay. So that will give me, tell me that, you know, uh, uh, the assumption that uh, the interval is not whole is going to be uh, wrong. Okay. So now, so this says that uh, uh, M is uh, complete. Now, how the isometric group is going to act transitively? So since it is complete, so I, 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 I choose two points, P and M. So here is my P, here is M. So since it is complete, so it is geodesically complete. So I join it by two geodesic, so that means that means there is a xp, t0 is m. And what I do is I take the midpoint of this geodesic. Okay? I consider gamma xp, t0 by 2. And I reflect. If I reflect, you'll see that if I take the reflection uh, along this, this, this point xp, E zero by two, this takes p to m. Okay, it requires a little more work, but this is what is going to happen. Okay. So, isometric group of the uh, symmetric space is going to act transitively. All right. So now, I guess I cannot start something new, right? Or I how much? One minute. All right, so uh, yeah, so uh, Pranov's example, which is SLNR mod SON, is a very special uh, type of uh, symmetric space of non positive curvature. And I'm going to do uh, so. So all symmetric spaces, all symmetric spaces going to, so yeah, so let me say that locally symmetric space, if I have a complete locally symmetric space, then I know that locally it is like symmetric space because universal cover is symmetric. But the point is if I start with a space which is not complete, it is not clear how to get a, how to prove the fact that every point locally is like a symmetric space. 
you understand the point uh, these differences that if the space is complete but i have no way to put a riemannian non complete space in a complete space then i will be able to like prove that but so but so this is a theorem which is a non trivial theorem which says that if i have a locally symmetric space it is locally like a symmetric space the theorem is a trivial consequence if i assume completeness because if i have a locally symmetric complete space if i take the universal cover it is symmetric space so it is of course locally like symmetric space but if we don't assume completeness then we will be in trouble but it is a theorem it is a non trivial theorem which says that if i have a locally symmetric space around every point there is a neighborhood which is isometric to a neighborhood of a symmetric space it's a standard theorem i don't know whose theorem it is but it's uh, i am not going to use that it's in helgasen 